Hey everybody. Um, <coughs> oh, sorry. <coughs> I'll start by choking. That'd be a good way to start the uh, the stream. Um, but hello, we're going to do this evening an unboxing of the game from Firelock Games called Oak and Iron, which has just arrived uh, from a Kickstarter I backed some time ago. And now I'd normally do unboxings on the big table behind me because I've got a lot more space. But I currently have another Kickstarter on that table called Reichbusters, which is set out for a mission that I want to do uh, tomorrow. So um, I'm afraid for the moment we're going to do it on this table here, which should be fine. Let me just adjust that camera a little bit uh, so you don't have the light in the way. There we go. Um, yeah, so we'll do it here and we'll, we'll get by. But this is the box. It's not too huge. Uh, it's a nice size box. Uh, there are a couple of add-ons which are behind me, so I'll bring them over as well. But yeah, for storage, it's a nice thin box, right? This is so this is tiny compared to most kind of Kickstarter boxes you get. But one thing I will say is the material the box is made out of. I don't know if you can tell that on the camera or underneath here, um, but super nice quality. Feels very high end. Um, just the look and feel and quality and thickness of the card of the box. It feels like this is going to last quite some time. Um, yeah, so that's one thing I will say is that the uh, lovely but all oh, new box smell. I can I'm getting a good whiff of that as I take it out. So yes, well let's do it. Oak and Iron. So it's the Age of Sail. It's uh, um, Master and Commander. It's Pirates. Uh, it's the Spanish. It's the English. It's the uh, yeah. It's the Age of Sail. Um, so I think it's more you know aimed towards the historical. Um, to try to be quite accurate, I think, to things like um, sea, uh, sail, sort of naval um, uh, battles. So, you know, all the things that come along with that. But uh, we'll go through the main box and then I'll grab some of the add-ons. Uh, I went with the Captain Pledge, which was, I think, the main game... Um, maybe a couple of the add-ons and then the sort of Kickstarter uh, stretch goals that come. So it's the, pretty much the, the basic pledge, I think, um, the, the captain's pledge. So we'll kick off. We've got on top here. Um, I'm not too thick. I'll show up here. She's literally sort of pamphlet sized. Um, A4 instruction manual. But um, like the box, good quality sort of pages. And straight away sort of, you know, lovely artwork inside. Uh, I have no idea how well the game plays. It looks really cool from what I've seen. Um, but yeah, it's... Uh, I love that idea of being able to do, um, you know, from the movie, sort of um, Master and Commander uh, type sea warfare, which would be really cool. Um, so no, I've not read through it, but there doesn't look to be... It's not massively thick, which means there isn't many rules. The rules started by the way. This is playing the game. So the rest of this was other fluff about the cards and the tokens. And then from here on in, you're talking rules. And then it looks like that's it. So that much is rules. So there's probably, you know, there's less than 10 pages there of rules. And then you're into creating your squadron and starting a game, multiplayer. And then, and then that's it. Oh, and nice on the back. Once you've kind of learnt the rules, on the back here you've got a nice sort of quick reference uh, guide there. So that's cool. I found this. Uh, this is the one thing I did see on top of the box when I opened it before, just to sort of take all the wrapping off. Um, was a voucher for twenty percent off of uh, gaming mats, uh, but. I think because there's been delays in shipping and other things that have gone on in the world, this expired in December 31st, uh, 2019. So we're a few months late on that one. So maybe it would have been good if it had delivered on time. Uh, the uh, the voucher would have been worth something, but never mind. Okay, tokens. One. So this. Okay, cool. So these are just the only tokens, and then there's there's sort of terrain. So, yeah, not too many. A nice sort of measuring stick here. Um, what looks like uh, either splash or cannon fire clouds, you know, from the smoke from the cannon fire. Um, then you've probably got enough tokens here for two players, I imagine. You've got some various um, markings for various nationalities. 
uh, looks like some coins clearly some you know anchor sales I'm gonna guess some of these um, you know, maybe boarding maybe turn tokens or something but uh, nice tokens again I'll pop this one out just so we can have a look yeah I mean double sided let me just check if all of the doubles yeah they're all double sided that's nice good thickness on the cardstock and this is uh, I'm assuming this is a you know speed five for someone who's you know full sales and gunning it as, as much as you can gun it in a sail in a ship with sails but yeah nice nice quality card stock there so no grumbles on that so far uh, this looks to be uh, clearly their version of terrain so you're playing this on a sea map clearly you're playing with sailing boats um, so this would be your terrain so your rocky areas to avoid etc are they double sided uh, they are somewhat double sided so looks like maybe a low and a high tide so clearly the rocks are protruding above the waterline here if I flip the things over the rocks are below the waterline so maybe you can have a sort of high and low tide situation after that um, looks like looks like fog this is just one huge tile one big old foggy area uh, I'll show on the map there and when I flip it over it's actually a landmass so in the same shape it's a fog so undiscovered land comes up as a landmass that you're able to uh, discover I assume and perhaps plunder for some treasure some more tokens here uh, some more terrain so this is the landmass side and there we go again the undiscovered or fog or whatever it and maybe it's maybe it's just that's kind of um, what do they call it when uh, you can't see the area in video games um, oh you, uh, you know what I mean the uh, fog of war that's it so perhaps this represents that fog of war until you discover what it is like I say we will get this all out and we will get a let's play up and running for it okay uh, this looks like your play mat so you ain't gonna see this on the on the close camera but I'll hold it up I won't be using this because I actually have a C mat from um, uh, who's it from <laughs> I wish I could remember all the names of all the different companies but I bought one at one of the games expos last year one of those kind of is a neo neoprene uh, C mat I bought it because I was playing um, uh, Blood Red Skies and Cruel Seas on it uh, and now I can also use it for this so otherwise you get this and I will try and hold it up but it looks like a what's that gonna be that's not even it's a 2x2 two two C map I won't hold the whole thing out because then I've got to try and put it back together again but there you go um, and it's got some details on it it looks very nice but like I say I will be using um, my neoprene C mat for that which is a 6x4 mat so I'll be able to go much bigger hopefully and have some pretty epic sized battles on it right underneath this we then have some stickers I think they're stickers they don't look like transfers no, they're definitely stickers so these are for your ships to mark You've got uh, Spain, France, England, Netherlands, Buccaneers, Pirates, and so forth. So there'll be enough there to do all of your ships. Now, I'll probably be looking to see if they do a transfer version rather than stickers, because, frankly, stickers won't look great on painted miniatures, let's be honest. Right, where should we jump into here? Let's jump into cards. We we'll saved the miniatures to last. We all know we wanted to see the miniatures. Um, we won't spend too much looking at cards. It's more just to look at the, the, the quality of them, really. But everything that I've looked at so far tells me it's all going to be of a very high standard. So standard sort of playing card sizes. You know, they they feel they feel nice in the hand. They're nice in the you know easy I could tell these would be nice and easy to shuffle uh, but we've got all sorts of things on here nice colorings nice imagery 
Yeah, fog is definitely something. Add zero to three fog pieces to the train. There we go. So definitely that. Just fog. And these are your uh, skill cards for your different um, groups. So the English here. Skilled sailors roll one more dice during a skill test. Expert gun crew. When making a broadside attack at musket shot or cannon shot, you may roll one extra sword result. So this will be all the different abilities that various countries have. And then these cards here, oh, these look like the cards you can play. So I'm, I'm assuming you'll have a hand of cards and you'll be able to play them to give yourselves an advantage or so on and so forth, or maybe interrupt your enemy. Uh, hey, Janus. Kickstarter goodies, yes, this arrived uh, yesterday. So I've had a good week on Kickstarters. I had Rockbusters arrive last, last weekend. And this weekend, I have um, Oak and Iron. <clears throat> so, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with, uh, with the Kickstarter results. So we're just literally going through the box, looking at all the bits and pieces in there. Uh, so, yeah, some more cards here. Let's have a look what these are. Uh, these are sort of effect cards or something. By the looks of it, wind increases... Wind decreases, wind change, gusts, calm seas, reduced visibility. So these look like all sorts of effects that can probably happen to you um, in the battle. If my camera would focus on anything. Hello, hello, Mr. Camera. There we go. Yeah, there we go. So um, sort of effects that may happen during your, you know, the sea can be a cruel place. It's a cruel mistress. <clears throat> Um, these ones are just more sort of uh, very similar by the looks of it. In that uh, they've got the, they've got different uh, card backs, but it just looks like the stuff you play from your hand or draw from that affects the battles you're having. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, a weather gauge. Okay, so this will tell you where the wind's coming from. Uh, you've got. Escorts and spies, blockades, so different scenarios, perhaps open seas, coastlines, uh, different types of captain, bold, lucky, strict, so on and so forth. So all these sorts of things, and then there's some actual units. So buccaneers, this is your boarding party. There's all, yeah, this looks, from what I'm reading, it's all words that I like the sound of, so that's cool. Right, this one here looks to be your sort of your ships, so your stack card. Yes, I will get to the miniatures in a second. You know, that's the thing. We, you know, if I don't show the other bits, we'll all just be disinterested until the miniatures come up. So, you know, we've got to give some love first to all the other effort that goes into the cards, etc. So these look to be your units, almost like your stack cards for your units. So here we've got, um, there we go, a sloop. Uh, we have a petite frigate. There we go, there's a picture of it on the other side, so you know what the hell you're building when you come to build your miniatures. I assume, you know, light galleon we've got in there, a flute, a corvette. Oh, that sounds fancy. Yeah, there's the corvette looking very fancy. It tells you, like I say, I haven't played the game yet, but, you know, standard type stuff, I think you can probably guess, you know, swords are going to be for when you're boarding cannons clearly going to be your cannons uh, you've then got you know um, speeds and all sorts of other things in here additional things you can carry on your ship etc <laughs> you can't start with dessert no you're absolutely right I mean you can occasionally you know right I know that they're there we can see them they're, they're in here they're in here uh, what the hell was in here uh, Let's go with these first. Oh, look, we've got some dice. That's always nice. Everyone loves dice. Now, this does use its own proprietary dice, which is, yeah, you know, it's a thing. It just means, one, I probably won't have enough of these, because one of the things I hate about um, games that come with their own dice is they never give you enough, so you end up having to constantly hand them around the table rather than having enough for everybody. Uh, so in this case, we've got six of these pirate dice which are very nice they've got some nice imagery let's get that so you've got the you've got the sails the hand cannon 
the uh, sword, skull and crossbones, and, a, yeah, and there's an actual uh, cannon there. Uh, who's coming there? Hey, Shred. So there's only six of them. Um, so, yeah, it is highly likely you're going to be handing these around the table. And that is my issue with if you're going to have your own proprietary dice. Either give away normal dice and then a card as a reference to what does this number, one, two, three, four, five, six, in this case, what is the eight sides that I should care about. Um, or um, give away more dice. Because... <laughs> Because six ain't going to be enough for two players, I can I can bet you. And I don't think I remember seeing an option to get more. It's a niggle that I have. Um, it is not a big deal, but I wish they would do more. I can't even tell you what this is. Uh, I'm getting an idea what it is as I open it. I think it's going to be the bases for the ships. Why they've wrapped them in tissue, I don't know. They're not made of glass. Yeah, there we go. It is the uh, the bases for the ships to slip into, and then it gives you all of your um, 45 degree angles and your broad and where your um, broad sides are, etc. Don't think it needs to be wrapped in tissue, but thanks very much. Um. Not sure what these are for. They look like for clipping uh, state status on your uh, on your ships. Yeah, there we go. Uh, hey, Amanda. Right, let's get into the good bit. Let's open up some. Uh, let's open up some tiny little ships. So they don't look massively complex. But they are, they are, you know, are they much more than board game pieces? Probably not. I've no idea what scale this is. Does anyone know what scale this is game is at? Because it's not 15 mil. It's because if this is a ship, this is uh, way below 15 mil. Oh no, I've got a bent sail there. Look, that's either bent sail or just a bit of flash. Probably that, probably actually that. Um, I can probably just cut that off. Um, yeah. But there you go. That is a ship. But if we grab the little plate, uh, it might be. Um, yeah, I should probably look at some instructions, um, but hey, we're just we're just winging it right now. Uh, um, yeah, and this is probably not correct. Uh, this is probably. Um, let's have a look how this all goes together. Now I don't know if you've got in different sales because I can't. This not it doesn't. Uh, let's see if we, let's see if the book covers it at all. I bet it doesn't. I bet you're on your own. Uh, yeah, that's what I was wondering where the other it's going as well, but uh, I'm not seeing that to be the case. So, well, like it gives you ship terminology in here, so you know what you, you can sound what you know what you're talking about. Now, so there's no building instructions, so I'm hoping therefore it's fairly intuitive. But um, yeah, it's going to look something like something like this. So, you know, these are going to be. I will paint these because they will be super easy to paint. I need to. I'm not. I'm just being cautious about on camera pushing this into th position too hard and stuff. Um, but there you go. There's a little. I'm guessing that's a sloop uh, because it's very tiny. So let's pick up something a bit more meaty. Let's go for this one. Will be better. This looks like it, this looks like it could be the Corvette. So it's a bit more on that sort of chunky side. What is a shame is I'm seeing that doesn't look right. So 
I'm not sure what's going on there. Oh, well, actually, maybe that's supposed to represent a. I think that might be to represent a broken. Let me just adjust the camera a little bit because you guys are not seeing a great image because the camera's constantly trying to jump up and down. Let me just let me just get you a better view. One second. Uh, close cam. I'll take the autofocus off and set it to what I would normally do when I'm painting. So come off of that. Go on to that. Uh, you might be right. Uh, it looks like it's um, too much of a bent angle because there's only there's only th so this one has four holes, right? So you're going to have certainly this is going to be your center, right? That's that's correct. That's going to be your center. Then this one's going to be, um, I imagine, behind that. Yep. Yeah. And then this one is where you get your steering and stuff from. So that one's going to be there. Uh, I think. Which is... And this one doesn't have a proper connection point. So I'm a bit worried... Oh, maybe, maybe it's like that. Hi, James. Come on in. I'm just doing a stream about unboxing uh, this this game Age of Age of Sale. It's called Oak and Iron. Awesome. Uh, that's quite cool, isn't it? Yeah. It's a game all about um, pirates and stuff. How was your game? Um, really bad with it. Really bad. Was it a bit too scary? Uh, no, it wasn't too scary. I'm just I'm not, I wasn't very good with the Wii U controls. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, buddy. What are you going to go and do now then? Uh, I don't know, I might just chill in my room, might do some painting. Yeah, alright buddy. Yeah. All right. Well you, you can chill down here if you want or you can yeah, go and do some stuff, whatever. Alright buddy, see you in a minute. Yeah. I, got to, I, I got to a bit where I, there was a door and I opened it and, and the alarm went off. <laughs> and then a bunch of zombies came through. Yeah, and that was I it. Didn't really, I didn't know where to see my gun. <laughs> got killed, you got, you got eaten by zombies did you? Yeah, I don't know if you're meant to die at that bit. I think you're meant I think to die. You, I think you can die anywhere, that's the point of it. Yeah. Yeah. I have to use some flares to trick some zombies, so that was pretty uh, hard. <laughs> Alright, buddy. Uh, we'll try it. Uh, I'm, I'm listening, Amanda. I'll try it. So this one, yeah, I think this one's definitely at the front. Because it's actually an, there's actually an angled post, so it can only really go there. Uh, which would mean we'll try this one at, the, at here. Yeah, and then we reckon this one at the back, do we? Uh, let me see if I can find the picture to correspond to that one. Ah, yeah, you're right. There you go, look. Uh, if we look at the light galleon, Manda was on the money, uh, as per usual. Um, that is the image there that we have just built. So there we go. That's the light galleon. Looking pretty cool. So then you break out one of these little bases for it, plug it in, and away you go. But yeah, these are going to be um, super easy to paint. Um, and like I said, there is, st and then if you would have missed it earlier, but there are stickers that come with the game for doing your sales and stuff, but they are proper stickers um i might look to see i'm sure if if these guys if firelock games don't do it i'm sure someone else does actual um transfers to put onto your sales and stuff um rather than using stickers i'm sure if you're using it strictly as a board game and you just want to go from here to table you can put your stickers on and away you go um but for the size of the ships um you know prime them contrast paint uh, you know the the, the wood um, ship uh, and you know paint some windows and some little black cannons and stuff it's not going to be too hard to make it look a little bit better even the sails you could probably go straight with uh, uh, you know a pocket three white for speed on those sails and they'll look they'll look all right and then put the uh, put the transfers on but yeah <laughs> yeah but you'll have to do the rigging yeah no. Nah. <laughs>
<laughs> it's a nice thought, but no, nah, no, nah, we're not doing that. Uh, <laughs> not at that size. No, thank you. Um, yeah, so let's um, we'll put this to side, one side. Let's try not to lose a cell. So I guess um, for the uneducated like myself, you can at least build the ship using the image on here to get like where does each of the sails go. So at least you've got that. Um, and there we go. There's the sloop there with the... So that's what needs to happen. Those two kind of uh, more triangular sails so I can see them now attach at the front there. Um, uh, it didn't seem to be holes. So how they're attached, I don't know. Um, so that might be interesting. But it needs to be a little bit of glue. We'll probably get them right anyway. Uh, yeah, so then you've got the flute um, and the corvette. And they're all in there. Cool. So, um, I won't just show you all of these. Because uh, you've seen the biggest one, I think. Which is which is the, uh, the old... Um, Whatever, this was called a light galleon, right? So, I hope that's the light galleon. I'm not sure how big they get because, uh, well, we'll see. So, I have got a couple of the expansions, so we might as well have a look at that. Duct tape it, that'll solve it. Yeah, we could absolutely just gaffer tape the whole thing up. Uh, but from what I've seen in the box so far, really good quality. Like, even the box feels quality, it feels like a premium product. Um, all the card stock is premium, uh, premium quality. Uh, the miniatures are tabletop board game miniatures. I don't think they go above and beyond. Like I'm looking at the detail on the actual hole and stuff like that. There's little bits of detail there, but it's not gone too crazy. But then, how detailed was the side of a, a wooden ship? You know, uh, how, what, 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 what was I expecting? Um, so, yeah, that's cool. Let me go and grab an expansion, and we can have a look what you get in there. Uh, let me move this to the side. So, we've got three. We have Blackbeard's Revenge, we have Men at War, and we have Ships of the Line. So let's take a quick look. And we will literally jump into the ships because the rest of it's going to be pretty much the same. You've, you've seen it all. Let's start with this one. Let's go with Men at War. And they're in tiny little boxes. I literally, like, look how these are tiny little, tiny little box. So this is Men at War. What type of plastic are they? Um, I would say uh, they're just PVC. They feel like PVC to me. So, yeah. Your typical type of sort of um, board game plastic. They don't feel. They're certainly not resin because it would have cracked by now. Um, so I think they're just PVC. Hey, Cotton. How you doing, my friend? Not spoken to you for a good while. How's life treating you? Right. Let's break open. Men at war. Men of war, not men at war. Again, box is really nice quality. Again, um, like it's got. A, I just, I know I've talked about this a couple of times now, but it just feels like a good quality box. It's that extra sort of polish that makes it feel like a premium product. So more cards uh, for your sort of your, your ships. Um, uh, some more tokens, fantastic. I would love it if they stuck a few extra dice in here. Oh, but no, they haven't. So I still have only got the six dice, which more of these um, bases that they've wrapped in tissue paper, which is nice of them. More token holders. Oh, yeah, there's definitely a bigger ship in here. Um, cool. So let's have a look what ships we got then. Just surviving the apocalypse. Yeah, but at least we've got nice weather for it, man. <laughs> if it is the end times, uh, we've had nice weather for it. So you can't complain. Uh, so we've got a fourth rate, a fourth rate ship of the line, a fifth rate sh frigate, and a sixth rate frigate. Try saying those fast. Uh, yeah. Of which it looks like uh, the fourth rate is actually the biggest ship because it has a lot more cannons than the others. 
let's have a quick let's have a quick butcher's uh this one looks like the long the longest ship so this one will show up the best on camera yeah you're right the fourth rate is the biggest okay this one's definitely got more more detail in it it's got more of the what you would typically see in the movies like the ornate back to them where the uh where the captain's quarters are, I guess, and they would normally be decorated very nicely. I can tell that that's in the plastic. Um, the cannons protrude from the, the uh, where the others are just like a little, um, almost marking on the hole. These actually are protruding, so you can actually see a bit of the cannons sticking through. Uh, there's a lot more detail on, on the actual, so as they've gotten a bit of a bigger miniature, they're able to do a bit more with it. Um, are you guys able to see well? So you need to turn a light on. Let me turn that light on see if it's any better. I was getting a lot of reflection area, so I had the light off. But yeah, so there is a lot more detail um, in the plastic. Yeah, cool. So let's have a go at building this bad boy. So we've got this on the front again. Uh, we've then got a big old sail in the center. Uh, we've then got a triangular one at the back here and then the sail at the front there we go there she blows right let's get a base out for it uh, Yeah, if you guys are interested in um, Reichbusters, which is um, World War Two, Weird World War, uh, sort of, uh, I almost want to call it like a dungeon crawler. Um, we've put a couple of games up of that on YouTube, and also if you look on my videos on Twitch, but we're going to play the, uh, I think it's the third mission tomorrow, um, so we'll do that on stream. So if you want to see that game, it's really good fun. Um, uh, definitely uh, yeah come come and check that out and then we'll maybe get this a game of this up on Sunday if we can uh, but yes yeah, so there you go that is the fourth rate uh, frigate that looks proper cool this is definitely giving me master and commander type vibes Which is definitely the music I'll be having playing in the background when we're playing this game. So yeah, there we go. So that is the um, so that's all that's in the box. Really, is the three is the three new ships. There's no actually. I would have. I would have. It would have been nice if there had been a scenario of some description. But there's nothing else in here. Let's check underneath. So whilst I get ships and some more tokens which is not to be sniffed at you would normally expect with an expansion well maybe not in the miniatures world but certainly in the board game world i would have thought there would have been a mission or a um scenario where these ships played their part um because otherwise i have no details on why men of war uh, or anything else uh so that's uh, probably just a shame i quite like little campaigns or little missions so let's do the next one, which is called uh, Ships of the Line. So again, unless I know, I, I wouldn't know why was that Men of War and why is this one Ships of the Line. <laughs> still not doing the rigging, Manda. Still not doing the rigging. Uh, right, there's some more tokens, lovely jubbly. Here's some more cards. Here's some more uh, clips. Uh, these are some more bases. We've seen all of this. Oh, this has got some big ships in. I'm seeing a big one already. Okay. So in this one, I've got a first rate. So if it was counting down before, technically the first rate should be bigger than the uh, fourth rate. Or oh, I have a third rate and a second rate. So I've got all the way from first to sixth. Okay, so let's have a look at a big one here assuming oh yeah look at these these are our big ships yes you're right uh, ships of the line did get big oh yeah let's have a look at this one I don't know if it's the biggest 
but it certainly looks it. That's a proper sized, proper sized chip. Okay, right. Let's stick some sails in. Feel like I'm a pro at this now. Thanks to Amanda telling me where the sails go. Some of them definitely have a more uh, tighter fit than others, but that's not a big deal. I would probably glue these in place anyway. Uh, but uh, I do feel like if you push too hard on that mast, it could bend under under its uh, the weight of you pushing down. So just being careful. So that's huge. For size size comparison, I will grab one of the others in a moment. Um, but this is significantly bigger than the other ships. Yeah, and again, the, the larger the ship, the more detail they're able to put on. So this one even has a bit of a, you know, again, from what I remember in the pictures in the movies, there's a bit of a statue on the front there. Um, so, yes, and a, obviously a very nice captain's quarters on the back. Uh, you're able to see a bit more detail on the decking, like some stairs going down here. Uh, the um, the uh, turnstile for the anchor and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, so let's grab. So this was the um, this was the first rate, and then I'm going to grab the um, which one was this? This was the light galleon, wasn't it? So I thought the galleon was going to be one of the bigger ships because the name galleon sort of sticks out of me. Um, but as you can see, it's tiny. It's going to get eaten by this ship. This ship is significantly longer, significantly wider. It has, this has one line of cannons. This has three lines of cannons and the line of them is much, much longer. So lots of pew pew noises as this goes past uh, and this thing gets destroyed and sinks to the bottom of the sea. Um, yeah. I'm sure there are advantages and disadvantages, clearly, um, probably being maneuverability and stuff, but yeah, that's a big old ship. Yes, yes, I think that's why the, the word galleon sort of stands out as me, because uh, it is always the, the pirate ship is a, probably a galleon. Right, well actually we're about to find out because the next box is the pirate box I believe. So that was the uh, ships of the line. I'm so watching Master and Commander after doing this video. Um, it's an awesome movie and it will put me in the mood to build all my little ships. That's what I'm going to do. Right, so I'm going to move this one out of the way. And we'll grab the last box. Which is... Let's put that there. Uh, so, uh, broad sides all round. Yep, this is Blackbeard's Revenge. Now, I don't know if this was a Kickstarter exclusive um, because I don't remember it showing up as something you could add. So, it might be one of the. Uh, oh, one of the things comes up. All right. So what have we got? More tokens. We have some bases. There's only two, so that must mean there's only two ships in here. Let's have a look what we've got. Is it the Black Pearl? We have got uh, one ship called the Revenge, which looks like uh, the little sloop we've seen before. Um, uh, unrated sloop, yes. And then we have Queen Anne's Revenge, which is a frigate. So let's build Queen Anne's Revenge, shall we? So uh, there's the little sloop that we've already built one of those, incorrectly of course, but we built one anyway. And this is the Queen Anne's Revenge. Oh, I like it. It's got a. I don't know if you'll be able to see this on the camera, but it has got a proper little, 
sort of ornate um, statue on the front there, uh, which looks like it will break under a small amount of breath, so I won't go too close to it. Um, and then we will build this up. So we have the center mast, we have the little, little doohickey one at the front there, technical term doohickey. Uh, we have the, what I think is probably used more for steering, um, and this one at the front. There we go. So this one is very low profile, so I assume that's for speed. It feels like it's a very fast, uh, it does say here, fast. This ship may increase its speed value by one when sailing large. Um, so it feels like it's probably a very fast ship. Um, but maybe it doesn't pack as much as a punch as the others. Oh, it helps if I put it on camera so you can actually see it. Uh, rather than me being over here somewhere and talking about it. Here we go. Maybe I should put it here. So yeah, this is it. This is, Let me get the base for it so it can sit on its nice little base. Yeah, I think it's it, obviously they are clearly ships that they've pillaged from somewhere uh, and just re-rigged them as as pirate ships rather than being fantastical, um, you know, black pearls and stuff. Uh, yeah. So, uh, did you get extra stickers in here? You didn't. So, um, actually, no, there were pirate ones in the original box. So, uh, I can let me grab those. I will because I know some of you joined a bit later. So. Um, I will grab so this is if you want to go straight from box to table it does come with stickers so there are pirate ones here if you to stick on um, your pirate ship because if it's flying the black flag at the back there or the black flag at the front there I will be going online to see I'm sure some company if not these guys someone else is already doing proper transfers because stickers will look awful anyway oh, okay there we go some some facts there the black pearl from the films was also a real ship named differently though that's cool yeah I wouldn't be surprised if these guys do throw in some of the more sort of you know well known pirate ships well I suppose we've got Blackbeard so there we go we've got one already so there we go that's that Uh, I'll, st I'll leave a couple of these out on the side here so we can go back and have a look at them. Uh, what, what did we build in the beginning? We built the uh, the light um, the light galleon, wasn't it? Yes, light galleon. Uh, this was the frigate. Uh, we then had the um, uh, fourth rate frigate and then a first rate which, uh, as you can see, even from that above shot there, they are significant. This is significantly larger. Um, so this is definitely my favourite one because it just feels more hefty. And it's just got like a bazillion cannons on the side there. Everyone's getting cannon shot. We do, def do definitely do not want to come up to the side of that unless you are very ready to do something. Um yeah so there we go so over, overall these will look really cool i think painted up on i've got a six by four um c mat a neoprene c mat from uh who's it from? let me see if i can actually find out who it's from uh normally it's in the corner of the mat isn't it uh deep cut studios it is so six by four mat of that so being able to sail at this size from one six by four edge to the other um, you yeah, know that would be quite a, quite a sale uh, and lots of adventures to be had along the way um, yeah there we go that was Oak and Iron uh, from Firelock Games the Kickstarter if you backed it it's on its way this only came yesterday for me um, so in the UK so if you have backed it it's coming to you soon and this is what you got in the box hopefully um, no, no breakages, which was nice. In the last Kickstarter I did um, with uh, right Busters, I had two breakages. One of the big guys, his arm had broken off, which was I, I was able to easily fix. And then who else was it? 
Uh, there was another miniature that had a small break, which I was able to fix. But these have come through perfectly. No bends, no bent sails. Nothing's out of shape. Um, there's very little, if any, clean up I would want to do on them. They're ready to go. Yeah, that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. I shall come over here, say goodbye to all of you. So if I come over here, press this button. Yeah, so there we go. You looked at Oak and Iron uh, from Firelock Games. Really cool. Uh, we'll get a let's play up of this as soon as we can. If you're interested in seeing it, uh, give us a follow and uh, you'll see it pop up at some point and you can come and play. Else tomorrow we're going to be doing um, Rockbusters. Uh, Mission 3, it looks pretty, uh, compared to the first two we played, this is where I think things get real. And there's a lot more, a lot more uh, 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 stuff going on. Uh, but so far it's been a cool game. Like um, My complaint of Mythic Games have normally been, they're so humongous that it takes you two hours to set up and one hour to play. That's certainly been my experience with Mythic Pantheon Battles and Joan of Arc. Joan of Arc, both of those games have been in their boxes since the first time we played them because it's almost a mission to get them out and play them. Uh, where this game, um, fairly easy to set up and when you play, it just it just rolls on. You just, you've got like six, seven or eight turns to get through it and every time we played it we have finished on the last turn it has been if we don't do this next we are done um so yeah it's a really it's one of the ones i've i really like so well done to them for for releasing a good game let's hope they support it and don't just jump on with the next one anyway that's for another video uh, this was to talk about this cool thing Master and Commander, Oak and Iron, that's what they should have called it, um, copyrighted. Uh, so yeah, thanks everybody, thanks for watching, I'll see you all next time, alright, bye bye.